Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Willie Morgan Show with Manchester United icon Willie Morgan. Always a pleasure to record this show. Always a pleasure to spend time in the company of Mr Morgan. First of all, how are you, Billy? Well, I'm very well. You call me Mr Morgan. That's that's the first time in ever it's called me Mr Morgan. It's normally him or Willie. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're not too bad. Um, in saying that, I know that you've not... You and Mary Ann not been too clever the last week, but you're okay now, and that's lovely. You look as handsome as ever, Cal. And I had an injection last week, uh, inoculation, for, and I keep forgetting what the word. Shingles. Uh, shingles. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, my surgery got hold of me and said, oh, can you come in and be inoculated for shingles? I, said, well, I don't have shingles. <laughs> and you say, well, you don't want them. I said, well, no, but anyway, I went and had that and they said there might be a little reaction. And there has been a just a little bit tender on the side of my face and my, my head at the moment. But other than that, yeah, it's okay. So hitting the ball well, very important. Uh, I've got a big match with Alex on uh, Thursday, my grandson. Uh, and sadly, he keeps beating me at the moment. So I've been tinkering with my swing to see if I can just get an edge on him. So we'll find out. I'll let you know on the next part anyway. And in terms of um, this week, any anyone you want to say hello to before we begin? Oh, just one. Uh, the, the woman's been in touch uh, through John McLaughlin, Sue Roberts. Uh, Sue apparently is an agent and she... Uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. Uh, she's been gone for quite a while, apparently. And uh, she's coming along when I when they rearranged this date for the Q&A down in Reading at the Hilton. Uh, so Sue's coming along. So Sue, I'm looking forward to meeting you. I believe you've got a lot of nasty questions for me. <laughs> so, um, but I do look forward to seeing you. And no doubt John will let us know when the rearranged date uh, has been done. Well, obviously, um, first things first in terms of the, the football. Before we talk about Manchester United, Celtic versus Rangers is tomorrow night. We're recording this on Tuesday, the 1st of February. If Celtic win tomorrow, Willie, they can go top of the league. Um, same amount of games played and they would have the momentum. Are you confident Celtic will beat Rangers tomorrow or do you think it's going to be very cagey? Did you say if Celtic win? I did, yes. When Celtic win... Tomorrow. Celtic will win 2-0. There you go. That's my prediction for tomorrow. Celtic will win 2-0. And yeah, they'll go two points, uh, they'll go a point clear then. Um, which is fantastic considering how bad a start we had. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, it, it's always uh, difficult when a manager leaves a club and you've got somebody new coming in, and it, it does alter the you know, you know, the logistics of what they're doing, how they do it. Um, so we'll see. But no, I think I think uh, Celtic will win 2-0 tomorrow night. And in terms of Manchester United, before we, we talk about United, I just want to make one point very clear. Um, obviously, everyone watching this will understand that there, there's obviously been news this week about Mason Greenwood. Um, that's been dealt with by Greater Manchester Police. Willie and myself, and hopefully all of you watching and listening, completely um, are against and aghast at any sort of violence against women or any individual and obviously we don't condone that behaviour neither of course do Manchester United it's a shame because he's a good player Willie but unfortunately we, we can't make any excuses for that sort of behaviour no matter who it is Well if if he's guilty which it, you know I, I don't know the whole story but if he is guilty of doing it then for me there's no comeback for you, I just don't, you can't condone that, never, in any way, shape or form. Uh, and it is sad because I think the kid is a good player, a very good player, and with a great future ahead of him. And we'll see. After, all we can do is wait and see what happens. Uh, um, I don't know. I, it's, difficult. it's not that Man United have just said, no, no, you're off, you're out. Uh, until this is resolved, uh, apparently with all the evidence that they seem to have, it, it's going to be difficult 
for them to get away with it. So, yeah, other than that, you, you know, it's still Man United, it's still the same thing. Um, you know, we're scraping wins and we're doing, getting, because, I mean, most of the teams in the league are mediocre. Really, mediocre. And there's not a lot to beat. But the, the problem we have, and we still have, same players are still there. It doesn't matter who's in charge. It didn't matter. They're still the same players. They've got, what, five, six managers sacked? They're still there. Would you keep them? If you took over as a manager, Mr. McFadden, would you say, oh, well, these players would be great under me? <laughs> really? What about the other five managers? <laughs> It's crazy. And it comes back to the question that we, we spoke about the last time regarding Ollie. Did he have the power to say, I don't want him or don't buy him or I, want, I don't want him and the team weren't sold? I don't know if he had that power. I just don't know. Just, um, just on that. No excuse. Just on that, Willie, just to add to that point, we did discuss that about Ollie and we, yourself and, and, and me, we were unconvinced as to whether he had that power. A change of management um, happens. Ralph Rangnick comes in to the end of the season. Apparently, he's going to have a role for the next two years behind the scenes if he doesn't stay on as, as manager. So when you hear that, the first thing that you expect is that he's going to have some sort of power to, to get rid of players if he's going to have a role at the club for the next couple of years. However, it's been reported by The Athletic and numerous uh, organisations and news outlets that Jesse Lingard was told by Ralph Rangnick that he could leave because he doesn't feature in his plans and his contract is up in the summer. But they've mm -hmm. also reported that although the player and the manager were happy for him to go, the club, someone upstairs, decided he couldn't go. What do you make of that? Because it seems a strange situation. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Somebody upstairs. Who's upstairs? Who's upstairs making decisions on your players? The manager should be doing that. That's his job. That's what he's there for. And to put the best team together that he wants. And uh, not summed up saying, who is it? I mean, can we find out? If you're there, can you can you ring the show or send us a message, tell us who you are? Because you're absolutely crazy. You're absolutely crazy to do that. Apart, I mean, Jesse, good luck to the lad, wherever he goes. Um, you know, he's, he's average. He's the greatest at will. He's average, the lad. He's not a Man United player. But why, why do that? Why go over the manager's head? Why have a manager? Why don't they let the guy upstairs, whoever he is? Um, uh, it's, it's absolutely crazy. And it would appear that it must have been the same situation with Ollie. Somebody upstairs is making the decision which is ridiculous. But then again, don't take the job. And genuinely, I mean, if I applied for the job, I went in and said, yeah, you can have the job, but we'll, we'll pick the players and we'll sell them. <laughs> you can stick your job. I mean, touch it. You know, you go there to put your own personal touch on your beliefs of how you want the game to be played and who you want in your team. Um, it's, well, it appears that it is someone else making the, the decisions, which I find incredible. I don't know anybody upstairs who could do that anyway. Must be Stevie Wonder. That's Stevie, he's getting everywhere, Stevie. <laughs> we'll see, we'll find out. I it just, hope we'll find out. It just baffles me, as you say. I mean, people like yourself and, and obviously managers who, who are in charge of these clubs, they are the football experts, so uh, the way I look at it, Willie, is with all due respect to yourself and me, Manchester United or Bank of Scotland wouldn't phone you and I and say, how can we best run our bank? So why on earth is someone who doesn't have a background in football thinking they can run a football club or in the footballing department? It, it, it makes no sense. Well, and you know, as we've said before, football is the only industry in the world where you, a manager can be unsuccessful, get the sack, and get a better job somewhere else. It's crazy. Why would you, why would you appoint someone? 
the manager team who's been sacked somewhere else because he was no good. It just wouldn't happen in any other industry. And it happens all the time uh, in football. It's crazy. And I keep saying manager. They're not managers, as you know, the coaches. Um, I, I don't know what the, the answer is. Um, I really don't. I just hope if they appoint someone new, I mean, this guy hasn't got a clue what he's doing anyway. Uh, hasn't got a clue. Um, but who do you bring, who's going to, who are they going to bring in? I don't know who they can bring in. Uh, but whoever it is, I tell you, if they accept the job without being able to pick, buy and sell the players that he wants, he's an idiot. He's an idiot to take the job, if that's the case. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, that's all you, you can do. It, it's hard, it's hard because when I'm, when I, the me are playing golf, uh, one of the old lads that works over there, Billy, uh, big massive red, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I don't have an answer. Billy, I don't have an answer. Uh, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> you know my thoughts. Bring a manager in. Just, just, on, that, just on that point, Willie, a, a fellow Scott and a fellow Manchester United a, icon, uh, Lou McCarry was on MUTV last week, and I think... The, the producers of the show were, were, were rather shocked. Uh, Lou said live on air, which, I don't, as I say, I don't think they were particularly happy about. Any player kicking off in that dressing room, I would kick them out of the club right now. Get rid of them. And I'm talking about any player that's doing that, by the way. 70,000 Manchester United supporters can't be wrong every week. These players have to start showing something because what we're watching now is abysmal. Okay, so you're just telling the truth. So what's wrong with that? Lou, well done, lad. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But it's the truth. It's criminal. And you know, you know who's been the poison for two years, three years? Him and his agent, Pogba. Poisonous. And then you've got other people that, that they've brought in, you know. Now you've got Ronaldo there, then there's a bit of it, no doubt. I'm sure they... They don't go to each other's homes, but I don't know. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It just didn't happen back in the 60s and, you know, most of the 70s. Didn't happen because you had a manager. You had a manager and he was in charge. And no one kicked off. No one. I told you the, the, the great story that, well, Dennis is in his book. Um, they asked for a five pound a week rise. And Matt put him on the transfer list. I put him on the transfer list. And I just went in and said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. And he, he didn't get his rise and he came off the transfer list. Is that simple? You don't, do, you know, I mean, that was, that's true. That's true, by the way. Five pound a week rise he was after. That's all. Uh, and uh, Matt put one on the list. So, but that's a manager. It's just so, on players within a dressing room, and I'm not expecting you to name names here, um, so, so don't worry, you can if you wish. Um, did you ever play with a player or a couple of players that you personally didn't get on with? But uh, And how did you handle that? Because you, you mentioned there the likes of Pogba, Ronaldo, there could be potentially a clash of personalities. Do, do you see it as you just have to be professional whether you like the person or not? Um, the, you know, back, again, going back to the 60s, uh, there weren't too many players in a dressing room that nobody liked. It, I can't remember. I think the only, the, the first time it ever happened, never happened at Burnley. I mean, everyone got on. There was no clashes, there was no nothing. Um, and at Man United, it was the same. All the big stars, everyone got on, everyone mixed. There was no cliques, no thing. Um, and the only, the, the one player, when Frank Farrell was manager, he bought Martin Buchan. 
And he wasn't the uh, most sociable person on the planet. It wasn't he, he didn't like him, he just that mm, prefer not to be in his company, let's put it that way. And that was for everyone, it wasn't just me. It was, um, but it wasn't nasty, there was nothing nasty, there was nothing said. You know, we went out, when we went out to play, we played together. You know, you're a team and you, you would really look after him and without a doubt, he would look after you on the pitch. Um, but other than that, I can't recall any, any player that uh, we, in the dressing room, just wouldn't happen. I mean, Matt wouldn't have it anyway. You're not in a million years. You wouldn't, you wouldn't dare do it. Uh, you had too much respect for the man. Um, or any manager of that era. You know, the players respected them. And again, at that time, we were all just happy to be getting paid to play football. I mean, it was like a dream. Because probably 60, 70 percent it would be in the pits. It was mostly from mining communities, you know, Scotland, Newcastle, Burnley, all mining. Um, so we were just, we were just happy to get paid to play football. Uh, that's no longer the case. Now it's agents, the mouthpieces. I mean, that is agent of Pogba. <laughs> He's the biggest joke on the planet. Uh, always sticking his nose in, saying something, but that's what they do. I mean, that's how they work. Uh, We'll see, uh, but without a shadow of doubt, if the same players are there next season, it'll be the same situation. Guarantee, someone has to come in and get rid of at least six to ten players. Get rid of them. And start afresh. We don't have a back four. We don't have a back four, and they spent millions. Um, it's it's just difficult, and then you come to Mason Greenwood. It's so sad because he, he could play. You know, you could play the, the lad. I liked him. Um, so we just have to wait and see. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who wants the job. <laughs> I mean, I suppose if you're out of work, you'll take it anyway. Um, Although Frank Lampard's got a job now, hasn't he? He's, uh, where's he got Everton? Everton, yeah, he's went to Everton. Just just on the, 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 the manager, I mean, you mentioned Sir Matt Busby there and the fact that he was a gentleman, but he could obviously be ruthless when he had to be. Am I right in saying that, that Jimmy Murphy was more of the, the fierce one out of both of them, that he could put anyone in their place if he had to, or was he similar to Matt? No. No. Never raised his voice. Ever. Neither him or Matt. Never raised a voice. They, they commanded incredible respect. They didn't demand it. it. It was just there. No, Jimmy never raised his voice. And Matt never raised his voice. If, well, there was, there was very little to, to go wrong. But if it was, it would be done in private and just very quietly. Uh, there was no remonstrations in the dressing room or, or anything, or the training ground, nowhere. If Matt had anything to say, which would be, you know, if you were going through a bit of a bad time, say somebody was in a bit of a bad time and he wanted to give him a rest, he'd take him into his, into his office and say, well, you know, why don't you, you know, you've been working hard and you know, this and that and have a, have a weekend away with the family. And, Take it easy, and we'll see you next week in training. We'll get back to normal. And so he did it. It was, and then you went out thanking him. Well, thank you, thank you very much. And then you get outside the door, think, oh, did he just drop me? <laughs> but he, there was no raised voices, and never ever. And Jimmy, no, Jimmy wasn't the hat to mind you, Joe. He was exactly the same as Matt. Just very gentle. Just just all nice. You know, they didn't have to do anything violent towards a player. You know, they didn't. And it was like that at most clubs. 
um, you know, Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley, they were great together. No one, you, you never ever heard them either. I mean, all people, it, it was similar all over every club. But again, you had a manager and an assistant manager, not a coach. Try to tell people what, how to play. Why? I keep saying, why would you have a player in your team that you have to tell them how to play? Why would he be in your team in the first place? It's crazy. And unfortunately, that's the way it is, or it seems to be. Um, I don't know. I mean, City looks like City, obviously, when you, it looks like when they win the league, two horse race, obviously. And, uh, but they're not great. You know what you've played, you know, they've, they've been lucky quite a few games. They're not great, but they just, they're organised. One thing about Pep is that they're very well organised and they do, they do cover for each other. And they, the one thing they do that when the opposition's got the ball, they attack the opposition, you know, they shut them down. They don't just stand around and say, oh, well, let the defence work it out. They, they actually go and fight for the ball. And that's what he did at Barcelona. Barcelona was the same. As soon as the opposition had the ball, they shut the opposite, you know, right away. And you know, it's worked for him, obviously it works for him. But he, he if anyone could become a manager, and Klopp for that matter, he, you know, as much as <coughs> I love Liverpool, um, I think Klopp's a good manager because he's a man manager. And you can tell the players want to play for him because they don't want you to let them down. Uh, the same with Pep. They don't want you to let them down. And he, he, you know, he has no problem about dropping somebody. You're not doing your job, you, you leave you out. And the players know that, and they accept that. So, but there's not too many of those around, sadly. Uh, they just out and out coaches, throw a blanket over them. I We've know, you're smiling, Callum, you're smiling again. <laughs> We've got five um, great questions um, from our listeners this week. Um, first one being uh, from Craig. Um, Manchester United are playing Middlesbrough in the FA Cup on Friday. What are your memories of the FA Cup from your playing days? Memories of the FA Cup? My memory was playing against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. There we go. I can't remember what year. 1970, 71, 69. Around about then. Middlesbrough, I think, were in the second division. Uh, and uh, they came, we went there, first of all, and I think it's the coldest night I've ever known in football. It was freezing, <laughs> it was Christmas time, and <coughs> we drew, we drew with them and we came back to Old Trafford on the Wednesday, that was on a Saturday, and we came back to Old Trafford for the replay. And again, they, they, they played very well, and it was nil-nil. A few minutes to go, and we got a penalty. And I took the penalties at Man United when I was there. And I always pointed to where I was going to put it because invariably I put it at the same place all the time. All the time. I didn't change, I, didn't, I just put it the same place. Um, and I turned around, and the keeper, I'm sure he was Irish, he was called Willie Wiggum. Willie Wigan, and, and we're at the Stratford end. I said, there's only a couple of minutes to go, and, you know, 53 and a half thousand in the pack, and silence. So I put the ball down, I turned around to point, and he was stood, instead of being in the middle of the goals, where I normally put it, he stood a yard <laughs> where I used to put it, and just started smiling. <laughs> And I, I tell you what, my bum started tweaking. I didn't know what to do. I didn't. Um, so I turned away again. And I think, okay. okay. And when I turn around again, Bobby, Dennis, George, and, all, and they're all going, oh, my God. <laughs> and he still stood there. I turned and I thought he'd go back in the middle. No, he didn't. He still stood just probably a yard to his left. Because I used to put it to his left, you know, on the right hand side of the post. 
and he still stood in the same place. I still smiling. Anyway, I slotted it where I normally put it, and he froze. He, 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 as I ran up, he just went, and he froze. And he didn't left me that much room to put it in, and he froze. Um, so yes, I remember Middlesbrough. Uh, my God, he gave me sleepless nights. I thought about him a lot. Wherever you are, Willie. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. You gave me a lot of sleepless nights. My God. Anyway. So yeah, ah, you know, we should beat them. We should beat them. But you just don't know the FA Cup. You just don't know we might you at the moment. So depends what team he puts out. Well, you've led me on perfectly to our next question. Um, question from Grant asking. Um, some pundits have said United are a better team without Ronaldo playing. Do you agree? Um, oh, Grant, a better team? Well, we haven't been for the past two or three seasons. That's why all the managers have got sacked. Would I have Ronaldo in my team? Yeah, every every step of the way. The only thing now, he's, not, he's 36. He's at the end of his career. And he is at the end of his career. And he's not going to chase around and hustle and bustle and chase people down when they've got the ball. But he is a great goal scorer. And if I had the team, and if I was the manager, Grant, I would have the team that would provide chance after chance after chance for Ronaldo. And I know he will take the chances. At the moment, we don't have the people to create chances for him. He's not going to do it on his own. It's impossible. Um, and I don't want Ronaldo running back and tackling in a own box. That's crazy. Let him do his job up front. But again, we need people to provide the ball for him. Um, he'd be in my team, certainly. With the players we've got, he'd be in my team, without a doubt. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's difficult. We need, we need to get Sancho on the right wing, wide, and we need a left winger wide on the wing it can go at the byline and create chances and Ronaldo will score 30 40 goals a season for us if we provide the chances for them so the answer yeah he'd be in my team next question we've got is from uh, from Nick he's talking about Oli Gunnar Solskjaer uh, Oli's daughter uh, Karna became uh, played for the Manchester United women team and it means that Oli and his daughter are the first ever father daughter combination to play for Manchester United. Um, what do you make of Oli on a, a personal level is the question from Nick after obviously that lovely achievement for the family. Oh Nick, I, you know um, I like Oli. I liked him as a player. You know, I know he spent most of the time as a sub but he was a great sub and he, I thought he was a great player. I liked him very much. Um, I was sad when he got the sack but like we what we've been speaking about earlier and, and in previous pods that we've done, uh, whether he had the, the clout to buy and sell, I don't know. Um, but as a person, I think it's fabulous. I didn't know his daughter played. I didn't know he had a daughter, to be honest with you, Nick. But no, I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, father, daughter, playing for Man United. That'd be a good question in the years to come. Must remember that one. Must remember um, that. Quiz. There's a bit of pub quiz one, that one. Oh, certainly is a great pub quiz question. And as you say, I think I think I'll be writing that one down as well. Um, yeah. the next question we've got is about Sir Matt, and it's a question from Patrick. And I really like this question because I, I believe I've asked you this before, Willie, but I, I may not have. And his question mm -hmm. is very simple. Is Sir Matt Busby the greatest manager in the history of Manchester United? In the history of football, Patrick. In the history of football, not Man United, football, worldwide, the greatest manager ever lived anywhere on the planet. End of story. That's it. As I keep saying, I rest my case, Your Honour. It's done. <laughs> uh, what? what well, I know. I know it's a very broad question. This one, but what was it that made him so good and so successful? When when you look back at the qualities that he had as a as a human being. He, um, apart from being a, a, a wonderful, like you say, human being, 
a wonderful person. Um, you know, he was just a big, humble man. Came out of mining village, big, humble. Apparently, he was a very good player himself. The halfback, uh, Patrick, as far as I remember, I think Matt played at halfback. Um, the great thing about Matt was that his judgment of the blend, all managers thought in that year, it was a blend. They're looking for a blend. You know, you couldn't have five George Bears or five Willie Morgans or five Nobby Styles. It was a blend, one of each. And that's what that's what he did better than anyone. The the blend that he put together. And and to play for, he was he was a dream to play for. I mean he, he just wanted, he didn't want to let him down. And I said many times, it's like playing for your dad. You know, if you come in, and, and which was rare at the time, you know, when I first joined them, we win, but an odd game when it didn't go, and you come in and you felt, oh, and he'd, he'd just say, oh, you've done well, thanks. You've done your best for me. <laughs> and it made you feel, oh, dear, a thousand times worse. I say he never raised his voice. Um, he was just a great manager and knew what he wanted. And he had a great assistant. Jimmy was a, a great assistant. Um, the closest the closest to, in my opinion, was Jock Steen. Very similar to Matt. Big, nice, lovely man. Put together a great team. Uh, I wish you had come to Man United after Matt uh, retired. That's the only regret we have that Jock didn't come. He'd have been fantastic. So, um, but no, Matthew just, Matthew, he was the best of the best. And there's lots of great managers, don't forget. Patrick, the loads of great managers, loads. But he was the best of the best, in my opinion, obviously. Uh, in many people's opinion and just a lovely person last question we've got um, is golf related you'll be pleased to hear we talk, we always talk about golf on this show and Willie's love of the game if you could yeah. choose one person um, currently living to, to take around the mirror for 18 holes who would it be and why one person oh well apart from my grandson Alex who are I love playing with because uh, he makes the game look very easy. Who would I like to play around the golf with? Uh, you know, I've been fortunate. I've played with lots of you know famous people. Um, apart from apart from Brian McFadden, who I play a lot <laughs> a lot with as well, uh, I love his company. I, I think uh, Rory McIlroy or Tiger Woods, because I'd like to see the way I grip the club, because they, they would break their hearts. Because I play cat handed, <laughs> so, I do. and soon a pro looks at me, they go, "Willie, don't want to know, don't want to." Um, Who do I like? Yeah, Rory. I think Rory or or Tiger Woods. Either one would be great to take around me. Yeah. I think that's a great answer. And just before we go, Willie, um, obviously great to be back recording with you. Any plans coming up over the next couple of weeks that, that you want to let us know about before we go? Yeah, we, any plans? Well, we, we've got uh, some work getting done on the house starting tomorrow, which we're not looking for. We are looking forward to the end product, but not looking forward to it being done. That's been so windy and cold at the moment. Um, and then uh, it's my son-in-law's birthday at the weekend. So uh, the, I believe they're coming over here to uh, have a few drinks and eat a bit of cake or something. But other, other than that, no, it's just all, it's just all very quiet. You know, I just look for I just look forward to going out and playing a few holes. Although today it was too windy, I, mean, I couldn't stand up. It was unbelievable out there. Um, now just the normal, Callum, just the normal. Um, 
take each day as it comes. I think that's the, the, the perfect motto in life. And before we go, Willie, you always say the same phrase, before we go, I'll let you finish on it as always. Yeah, well, I mean, all the listeners, I mean, it's, I'm so grateful that you even listen to the rubbish that I talk anyway, and, and the viewers. Um, and as always, as in the words of the great comedian Dave Allen, may your God go with you. And on that note, it's time to end. Until next time, take care of yourselves.